Hello, this is the third part of a YouTube video for the following uh, Git repository that run through some examples of using Flink for real-time data analysis um, with Kinesis Data Analytics on AWS and specifically the studio within Kinesis Data Analytics or KDA. Specifically today within the Git repository, there's this folder interactive Zeppelin notebooks, and we're going to be looking at version 1.13. And in here, there's a, a Zeppelin notebook that we can upload to KDA Studio, and it'll run us through some common transformations and operations. So uh, without you know further ado, let's jump into that. I'm here in the AWS console, the homepage, and if I go to Kinesis, you can also search for Kinesis in the top bar if it isn't in that menu there for you. And I can go to Data Analytics. Further, I can go to Studio. If you haven't created a Studio yet, you can reference in the Git repository. There is a video here, the second one on creating a Studio and uploading the notebook. So I'm going to assume that you've already watched and completed these first two videos of uh, setting up your Python script to send data to Kinesis, some example data, and then also that you've completed uh, deployment of a studio and uploading of the notebook. Uh, within here, we can go, we've created the studio notebook, and we can open this in Apache Zeppelin. I already have it open here. And with that said, let's, let's walk through this notebook uh, to give you a really good sense of how things are working. I'm also going to start my application that will send sample data to Kinesis. Again, if you need help getting this part set up, if you reference uh, part one and two YouTube videos, you'll see that it'll walk you through all the setup for the, the studio and also the setup for, for a Kinesis data stream and the setup for this a sample Python application. And this will take a few minutes to get going. This is the notebook we're going to walk through. There's a number of really useful links here that you can take a look at. Um, if you're learning more, trying to learn more about Flink, I think these are great, great resources. You'll also notice too that since we're using a notebook environment, at the top of any uh, cell in the notebook or piece of code in the notebook, we have this uh, percent symbol and this essentially this like uh, cell magic or interpreter. So within the Zeppelin environment, you have a couple options of just plain Flink, PyFlink, um, you know, an iPyFlink, a streaming SQL, and a batch SQL. We're going to be primarily using the streaming SQL, but I did want to call these out in case you wanted to use the different operators. And just so you know what this first line, you'll see this in a number of the of the cells that we have. And, okay, great. Just to check back in, right, we can see that our Python application is now sending data, which is excellent. Great. And with that said, let's uh, start to actually work with this data. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a table. And this is going to be a, a table of the raw data type. And we're just going to have a single column. Essentially, what this will do is it'll it'll take the entire message that's being sent, each message, and it'll just put it in one column as a big message. Uh, this will be quite helpful for us to inspect the uh, output of the data. So I'll create I'll create the table, or in my case, recreate it. And then let's do a select star here. And we should see in a moment that you'll see some data displaying on this window. Great, and there you go. You can already see, right? Again, it's it's just a single column uh, raw data, and it's giving me the entire message. So again, this this raw data format and and an operation like this is great for inspecting your data. Let's cancel this. And what we'll want to do next is we'll want to, instead of just having our data as one big column, 
will want to actually have uh, you know individual columns, so more of like a proper table with a full structure. So you'll notice here for the format I'm putting JSON, and then also notice that I'm breaking out the table by individual columns. So if you look at each of the fields here, you'll see that there's a column here. Um, and then I am also including a watermark just so that we can keep track of where we are in processing this. I'm using the, the drop-off uh, time, but you could use a different field if you wanted to. So let's execute this. Great, our table's been created. Uh, one thing I like to show as well is you can run a number of operations here to describe these tables, right? So if you see I run describe on the name of that table we just created, you'll notice that it'll print out the columns, right? And there's also some other commands here as well for show tables, show databases, show catalogs. So if you're trying to, you know, inspect your tables through the through the console here, or sorry, not through the console, through the notebooks, you can run these. So with that said, right, we have um, our table created. Let's maybe just do a select star from this more detailed table and see that we can view the data. Our expected behavior here is we should see that this window below starts to fill up with the, the data that's being sent to Kinesis. OK, great. It looks like it's doing that. And a, a key difference between this table, so this is the yellow cab version, you know, or 1v13, versus the raw table, is notice that in the raw table we have a single column, because all we defined was a single column, and we did format raw. And then in this table, we did JSON with broken out columns. So you'll notice that we get, you know, right, a column per, per you know, ob field within that JSON, which is more ideal and, and what we generally want. So, so let me stop this since we see that this is working. Great. So that's a select star. Let's get a little bit more into some common types of operations we can run. In this example, let's do a filter. So one of the fields we have is trip distance, since this is based off the publicly available New York City taxi cab data. So in this example, let's do where the trip distance is greater than three. So what this means is that the data that will populate in this window below will only be where the trip distance is greater than three. And if you keep an eye on the trip distance column, what you'll see is that we're seeing values you know, above three, right? So you can see four, six, um, you know, 17, so on and so forth. And this is a change. Like if you notice in the select star, right, we have 0 0.6, 0 0.23. So we, we do know that this is actually working because we see that all our trip distances are above three. We'll cancel that. The next thing we could take a look at is user defined functions. So there are options here to, you know, as an example, include some some Python code or uh, do some more function type based work. So what I've done here is I've I've just wrote in a simple user defined function that will convert the uh, capitalization to lowercase. So I've I've called it uh, basically Python lower, right? It's a scalar function. It you know, the function takes as argument self and, and s, right? And then with s being the kind of the input data, and then we're going to do two lower, we're going to return that. And then I register this function as a user defined function. So we'll run this. And what we'll do in the next command here is within our data, we have a text field, a store and forward flag. That's generally all uppercase. So we're going to use that function we just created, and we're going to uh, pass it that column, and we're going to rename that column as lower. So when we run this, we should see two columns in our table that we're selecting, and the original should be uppercase, and then the output of our user defined function should be lowercase.
Great. And here's an example of that user defined function at work, right? Here's the original column. And here's the output that's been converted to lowercase by the function that we've created. So we'll cancel this. The next part that we'll take a look at is uh, windowing. Windowing is a pretty important um, uh, concept or operation within Flink or uh, really within you know, streaming in general. You know, you're at some point probably say that you want to do something like an average or um, maybe like a group by or basically an aggregate function. And in order to do an, an average or a sum or a count, you'll need to specify a window of time within you want to average. So since our data is streaming and always coming in, we can't easily just take an average of the whole stream but maybe what we want is a rolling average of the last 10 seconds or the last one minute, whatever it might be. So I've linked to the documentation here. I won't go into it in detail, um, the different types of windowing that's available and, and some other documentation and aggregation. But let's take a look at if we want to look at the average trip distance. Um, and then what we want to do is an interval of, of 10 seconds. So this will be roughly the average trip distance every every 10 seconds. Um, Great. And you can see that it's going to produce the average and populate those. So these are the, the new and updated averages for that window. Cancel this. And we could do a similar operation if we want to take a look at um, fair amount. So instead of trip distance, we could say, you know, what's the average cost or the average fair amount? Right, and then similar, we could see here the, the average fair amount. In this case, I do uh, an extra step here, and I also group by vendor ID. So we can see that we're getting the average fair amount by, by vendor. So this is the average fair amount for vendor two. And if we let this run long enough, we'll also start to see for uh, vendor one as well. Great, so we'll cancel this. Uh, joins are also a pretty important concept. So at some point, at uh, one point or another, you're going to want to do some some joining of, of your streaming data. So what I've done in this example is within the, the actual uh, streaming data itself, if we go back and take a look at a sample of the data, you'll notice that we have a vendor ID, and it's either one or two. There's two vendors. But Perhaps we have a data set that has um, a table that says vendor one is equal to this and vendor two is equal to that. And let's say that we want to join to that table. So as an example, I've added this reference data piece and it's uh, vendor.ref.csv. And if we download this, What you'll see is it says vendor one is Creative Mobile Technologies and vendor two is uh, Verifon uh, Inc Incorporated. So what we'll want to do is we'll want to join our raw data and have it set up so that instead of seeing vendor one, vendor two, we see the actual names of these two vendors. So Creative Mobiles or uh, Verifon. So I've created this table here where the connector is file system. Right. If you noticed in the table creations we made up above, the f connector was Kinesis. And what we'll be doing here is we'll be referencing this S3 location that I showed you in the format of data CSV. And in this select, we're going to do a join here between the streaming table and the table that's in S3, the vendor details in the yellow cab. And then again, we should see instead of the vendor ID of like one, two, we should actually see the vendor name. Awesome, and you can 
see that working here. And finally, let's say that we want to write some data back to S3, right? So again, similar, we can create a table here with a file system connector and a path to S3. Um, you notice that I've also put a partition by field, so maybe I want to partition by vendor ID. And I've also uh, included some information on the, the commit policies and delays. So let's create this table. We'll set some environment variables around um, exactly one's processing and uh, checkpointing. And now let's do insert into that S3 base table. Cab. And what we should see is we should see in a moment here a new folder created. And that folder should be SQL output uh, 1v13. And then in there we should see two folders, one for each vendor, and we should see that data is starting to be populated there. So we'll allow this to run for a few minutes. Our data is still being sent, which is excellent. So likely take a minute or two, uh, possibly several minutes to fully populate. There we go, there's the folder. Vendor one, you can see we have a file being created. Vendor two as well. Cancel this. Great. The next thing I just want to uh, mention as well is you'll notice that when we created our original table up top for the Kinesis data stream that we put for the scan stream in post latest, which means that it's always going to be grabbing the latest messages from where it left off. But Kinesis does have some retention to it, and as an example, it could be storing messages for say 24 hours. So a common question is, well, what if I wanted to use Flink, but I wanted to rather than processing the latest or where I left off from, what if I wanted to process uh, from like the beginning of a stream or a specific area? So in this example, you'll see that I have the exact same table that we created before, but you'll notice that for the stream, the scan stream init post, I put trim horizon, which will bring us back to the beginning of the stream. Um, you also notice too that I, I linked a piece of documentation here if you want to read more about this. So let's create this. And we can select star from here. And then again, where where this is actually selecting from is, is the very beginning of the stream itself. Um, so just an example of if you wanted to you know, reprocess some data from a beginning of a stream for any number of purposes. Great, and we'll give this a minute to populate the screen. This begins. Fantastic. Awesome. So hopefully this video is helpful. This is just a walkthrough of the interactive notebook that's part of the Git repository. Uh, once you've completed the first two parts of setting up this uh, program to send your data and uh, creating your environment and uploading the notebook. You can actually work with this notebook to start to get a, to start to get a sense for how how Fling through the streaming SQL APIs works. Thanks so much.